bunnies and Easter eggs. The symbols of Easter and of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, wait, that can't be right. There are no Easter bunnies in the Bible. And yet these symbols are adorned in every shopping market around the country. What do they have to do with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, friends, the simple truth is that Easter is not and never has been a Christian holiday. No, sadly, Jesus was simply co-opted into this pagan holiday to disguise a great truth of this age, that the mysterious Babylon religion, as foretold in the book of Revelation, is still being worshipped in the open this very day, even by those that think themselves Christians. Today, we take a look at the true origins of Easter. Yes, many still debate these origins, and for those interested, I've written a response to those debacles that you can find by clicking the link in the description of this video. For now, though, sit back and relax as I exhort upon you the true origins of Easter. Easter is the celebration of the Assyrian Babylonian goddess Ishtar, also called Ashtoreth, or Astarte, who, amongst many things, was celebrated as a fertility goddess. Rabbits and eggs are the symbols of fertility. Traditionally, she was celebrated in the spring, along with the rebirth of nature. Not only of nature, though, but of her miraculous conception. The spring equinox marks the date of the conception of her son, Tammuz, whose birth is celebrated approximately nine months later on December 25th. Is this sounding familiar to you yet? Yes, my dear friends. I'm sorry to say, Christmas too is a pagan holiday. All indicators point to our Lord Jesus Christ being born on or around the Feast of Tabernacles sometime in September, not in December, and certainly not with a tree. But let's get back to Ishtar, or Ashtoreth, Easter. Who is she? Well, she's gone by many names. Some call her Inanna, Asherah, and Venus. She's also been called Aphrodite, Artemis, and Diana. She has had many names and many forms over the centuries, but they all boil down to one origin, one person, the Queen of Babylon. Semiramis. You might recall a story in the Bible about a tower in Babylon built to reach heaven. Well, if you recall, God confounded the languages at Babel. When this happened, the people split up, gathering together with others that spoke their language. Although the majority could no longer communicate with one another, they still had their same religion from Babylon. So when they formed new cities, they brought their old religion with them, giving each god or goddess a new name. Nimrod, the king of Babylon, also known as Gilgamesh, became Marduk, An, and Sargon of Akkad. Semiramis, his wife, became Ishtar, Inanna, Astarte, and Ashtoreth. Her son Tammuz became Asher, Horus, and Baal. So what does all this have to do with Easter? When Nimrod died, his wife Semiramis sought to retain her power as queen of the kingdom, so she concocted a story about her unborn child, that her pregnancy was miraculous, and that her child Tammuz was actually Nimrod reincarnated. By marrying her son, the supposed reincarnation of her husband, this would not only make her the queen of Babylon, but because Nimrod was the god king, it also made her the mother of God, the queen of heaven. Confused yet? That's okay. It's a lot to take in. In short, this fake miraculous conception, which, by the way, was a forgery of God's promise to Eve in Genesis chapter 3, was taken, twisted, and retold through multiple languages in every nation, each time with a little change, but all from the same origin. In Egypt, Ishtar and Tammuz became Isis and Horus. In other parts of the world, Devaki and Krishna, Maya and Buddha, Juno and Hercules, etc., etc., 
all the way down to today's Madonna and Jesus. In fact, Catholics still retain her title as Queen of Heaven, which is found nowhere in the Bible. Of course, that's because the Mary and Jesus that Catholics worship are not the Mary and Jesus of the Bible, and this becomes painfully clear in how they date Jesus' resurrection. The Bible states that Jesus spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth after his crucifixion. Why then do Catholics celebrate Good Friday as the day that Jesus died on the cross if Easter Sunday is the day of his resurrection? The last time I checked, three is three, not two or one. If Jesus died and was buried on Friday and rose on Sunday, that would be one day and two nights in the grave. Not three days and three nights, as the Bible states. But Catholics don't care about any of that because they are simply looking for a way to co-op Jesus into their pagan holiday, celebrating who they love most, the Queen of Heaven, Ishtar. I mean, Astarte. No, uh, Ashtaroth. Semiramis? Ah, right, Mary. Their explanation for this is that the Bible states that Jesus was buried in the evening before the Sabbath, and the Jewish Sabbath starts on Friday night, which, for the Jew, is really Saturday morning, because the day ends at sundown, according to their calendar. Except, John 19 makes it clear that this Sabbath was the High Sabbath of the Passover, not the Weekly Sabbath. The year that Christ died, the High Sabbath took place on Thursday. That would make Wednesday, then, the day that Christ was crucified. He died and was buried on Wednesday evening, before sundown, which would be the start of Thursday, the High Sabbath. So, Thursday night and Thursday day is day one. Friday night and Friday day, day two. Saturday night and Saturday day, day three three days and three nights, just as the Bible states. In the early morning on Sunday, while it was still dark, the stone of Jesus' tomb was already rolled away when Mary found it empty. It was that Sunday that he appeared to his disciples, and that's why we assemble together on Sundays to praise our Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, we come to the end of our study. Although Jesus was killed and resurrected around the time of the pagan holiday called Easter, that holiday has never been about him. He has simply been adopted into the holiday, so that the mysterious Babylon religion that is still kept strong today through the Catholic religion can worship their pagan god Mary, Ishtar, the Queen of Heaven. So when Easter comes around and you ask why Jesus seems like an afterthought to the eggs and bunnies, you now know it's because he is. It's a sad truth, but a truth nonetheless, and even more proof that we are edging closer and closer to the end of this age, just as the Bible describes. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful or entertaining, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and sharing the message. Thank you, and good day.